Hi guys, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to create basic portrait lighting for dummies. Well, yes, the pun is intended. We're going to be using a dummy today for me to be able to show you guys the easiest way for us to light portraits using my small LED lights. Before we begin though, I want to give a brief shout out to our friends from Hollyland for sending this over. I've actually been looking at this for quite some time. This is the Hollyland Mars 400S. It's basically a Wi-Fi transmitter for HDMI to my phone, to the TV. And I'll explain why I want this and how beneficial this will be to this demo today. What I have now is I have the Hollyland transmitter here connected to my camera via HDMI. So everything is now being projected wirelessly to my phone. The reason why I have my phone here is because the downside of, of most digital cameras is that when you have your HDMI display on, it blacks out the back screen. That's why I need my phone here so that I can see what I am shooting. And at the same time, I am recording now so that you guys can have a first person's point of view of what I am doing. And the most important factor here is that you will also see all my settings in real time. That's why I'm so happy with this Hollyland Mars 4000, uh, 400S is because with this transmitter now, I can actually do that without any problems, without, with almost zero latency. And one thing about this transmitter too is that I can project this, the image that I am seeing here now in my phone to different iPads or Android devices and it's got a receiver also that I can connect to the HDMI input of my TV. So it makes it very easy when I'm shooting, especially now that we're in a pandemic state, um, the others can actually be in a different room and they can see exactly what it is that I am shooting. But for purposes of this YouTube channel, I'm very, very excited to be using this because I've always wanted to bring you guys immersely as a first person, meaning I want you to see everything that I am actually seeing. The light that we will be using today is the brand new M200R from Photix. This M180, this is the older model of this M200R, was my favorite go-to small light. But with LEDs, it's generally soft in nature already. So even if the light is this small, we're getting very nice soft light, but of course, the bigger the light source, like what I'm using now, like the Photix R3 to light me up, it is much softer than this M180s, but I will show you how I use this when I shoot weddings and it gives me beautiful, beautiful light. But today, I am going to be using the new M200R. This is basically the big brother of the M180. Uh, in essence, the biggest difference, the M200 can give you RGB colors, the M180 cannot. That's it. That's basically the biggest difference. And of course, some other uh, physical differences, but more or less they're both the same. Okay. All right. So let's start. Now, first thing that I will do is I will set my white balance. Right now I'm set at auto white balance. Beautiful. You could see it here in the screen and I'm going to cut probably to what I am seeing here now. Thank you very much, Hollyland. This is this is something I've really, really been wanting. So I'm going to set my white balance now to custom white balance. All right. And I will set my color temperature to what my flash is set to, which is 3600 Kelvin. So I'll bring this one to 3600 Kelvin. You're going to ask me now why it's 3600 Kelvin, because my light over there, it's tungsten based more or less about 32 to 3600 Kelvin. So everything will just be properly, um, uh, everything's just going to be lit the same. Okay. So I am shooting now on aperture priority because that's how I normally shoot. But today I can actually shoot in, in manual mode, but I think it's going to be quicker for me to be shooting in aperture priority. So I can show you guys, um, I'll turn this light off first. So you could see the ambient light. Now this is the ambient light. If I set it at proper exposure, this is basically everything that's happening now. 
we want the entire back to be black. So I will be underexposing it just by touching my exposure compensation dial here to remove the back part as much as I can. Then I will make sure that I am be get I will be overpowering everything with my with my Photix M two hundred. So my shutter speed and my ISO are both set by my camera. I set my aperture at two point eight. I am using an A seven R Mark three with a seventy to two hundred two point eight GM lens. Okay, so let's start this. Basic. The first thing you guys need to understand the lights is. We start off with side lighting, one light. Side lighting gives you a very nice dramatic effect. This is actually perfect for men. It's very masculine. Um, I set my light now. The power of my light is at 10%. Maybe I will make it stronger so that I can kill the existing ambient light that we were getting earlier. So. I made my light stronger now. Definitely, I am not getting any ambient light. All the light that I'm getting now is from this M200R. So side lighting. This is basically side lighting, meaning you've got a straight line in the middle of the face, illuminating one side and the other side is in shadow. Uh, this is nice for creating very dramatic light. And if you want, you can actually open up the shadows by adding a reflector or any reflective surface on the other side, which we can use maybe even just a piece of bond paper. Here, if you take a look, even a piece of bond paper will open up the shadow. See, that's the reason why I am shooting an aperture priority because any change in, any change in exposure the camera will actually compensate for that depending on how I want it set. So there, you can see it now, okay? So you could always add another source of light by adding a reflector. So that's side lighting for you. Now, the most common type of light is what they call the Rembrandt. The Rembrandt light is more or less 45 degrees from above. There you go. That's it. Rembrandt lighting is when you could see the triangle on the cheek, as you can see there. Let's bring up the exposure a bit. There, since we, we overexposed already, now I, my exposure is set to zero because this light is basically overpowering everything already. So I'll make it even stronger. I'll put it at 100% just to make sure that we don't get any ambient light in there. That's your Rembrandt lighting. The key with Rembrandt lighting, I'll take a shot now. See, look, a beautiful thing about the Sony's is that it just focuses on the eye every time. There we go. So this is Rembrandt lighting here. There, this part here. If you can see the triangle, that's it. That's when you can see that it's Rembrandt. This is the lighting pattern that I personally love a lot and I use a lot. All right, so from Rembrandt, you can now move the light this way and you get your loop lighting. Loop lighting, you can see it here, I'll take a shot. The loop light is basically another form of the Rembrandt lighting except that you take away, sorry, you take away the shadow of the triangle that, are, that is on the cheek by moving the light about 45 degrees to, the, to your subject and 45 degrees above, and you're getting this loop by the nose here, this one right there, okay? That is loop lighting and that is your beauty. Uh, this is your basic, basic light. All right, then there is also another one. It is called butterfly lighting. This, butter, this type of lighting is ba was basically used by a lot of Hollywood actresses during the 1920s. Everybody just wanted to be shot using butterfly lighting because it is very dramatic and very pleasing to the subject. 
Now, butterfly lighting is basically, sorry, there. Butterfly lighting is basically this shadow right here. So I'll take a shot. This is it here, right there. That's your butterfly lighting. When you see, actually, it's still a bit wrong because you have to be directly above the subject center. I'm still off center here because of my limitations with the light stand, but I could just hold on to the light there. Now, the newer versions of the butterfly lighting is you actually add another reflector here to make sure that the shadows, you open up the shadows underneath. This is now what is called the clam lighting because it's shaped like a clam. Now, instead of having a reflector, this is your beauty light, something that you would see more often. This is very, very flattering to any woman, but I like doing it with two lights. I will set this light to at 3600 to match the color. This is at 100%. I will probably set this light to about 25%, so one-fourth ratio. So there we go. I can just hold it here, take one shot, and that is your clam lighting. There you go. So I, I think I can even make it stronger. Instead of 25%, maybe let's make it 50%, so one half, one half power. Uh, the ratio is one is to two, but I think it's a bit too much. But yes, that is your basic beauty light. Okay, so that was really basic, but that's where you should be starting all your portrait work. So just to, just to summarize everything that, we've, what, that we use today, I am using my A7R Mark III with a 70-200 lens. My main light is the Photix M200R. My point of view camera now is being recorded, thanks so much to Hollyland for the Hollyland Mars 400S. My settings would change depending on the light, but I am on aperture priority. I set my aperture at 2.8 and my white balance was set at 3600 Kelvin to match all the light that we have now. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this very, very basic introduction to portrait lighting. I hope this starts your journey and, and it kickstarts basically your love for portrait photography, a genre in which I am so in love with. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below and I will be more than happy to answer most of them or if not all of them. So again, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see more of my images, you can follow me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, so till the next video.